And we are rolling. Let us know what we're doing here out at the Capitol. Yes. Sacramento, California. Yes, yes, we're here. Beautiful Sacramento, California Capitol. We are here at the Capitol to for hearings on our bill called the Upward Mobility Act of 2021, which among other things would require that where there are vacancies on or after next year for state boards and commissions, that there be at least one member of that board or commission who is from what we call an underrepresented community. Now, what's important for us about this bill is that also included in the bill is language that Coalition for a Just and Equitable California, CJEC, actually authored that would for the first time ever, first time ever, make California break down the data it collects for its black population by lineage. So you know right now we use this big black or African American category, right, to describe who we are. And that works for, you know, everyday parlance and right, you know, for us just talking. But for policy, that's not enough. We need to break that category down because it's very, very broad, right? And we need to talk about specifically blacks from the U.S. USA, right? Blacks who descend from U.S. slavery, blacks who come from our Caribbean um, countries, blacks who come from our African countries, right? Our community is not a monolith. So we need to make sure we're getting good, clear data on the specific needs of our community so that way we can design good, effective strategies to get good and effective outcomes, right? So that's why we're here today. We just had our hearing in the Senate Public Employment Committee. We were successful. I was very lucky to be voluntold to actually testify on behalf of Coalition for Justice Equ Equitable California, along with my partner Emmanuel from the um, Coalition of Black Employees. We were successful today. This is a big accomplishment because we got the bill passed out of the Senate. Uh, Public Employment Committee, and we're on our way now to the Senate Judiciary Committee. So this is a big deal, big win, uh, great day, and yeah, here we are. <laughs> woo, woo. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I, I didn't catch the names. Austin to self-identify. I think it was Emmanuel who was going to speak first. I apologize. Uh, uh, if you want to go ahead and get your present and to get your name and. You may proceed. Um, let me refresh since we're a little more than halfway uh, through the agenda um, that uh, we and opposition witnesses are limited to two minutes each and the time is not transferable. When we get to teleconference testimony, it's limited to name affiliation and support for opposition as case may be. So we'll come back to uh, the least full this time. And uh, looks like we have a a live in person support with this. You'd be supported to uh, right here under the microphone. Oh, right. uh, it's lovely to I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Hi. Good morning. My name is Emmanuel. Uh, I'm sorry. Good afternoon. My name is Emmanuel. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I come to you today to personally express the Coalition of Black Employees' support of the Assembly Bill 105 Upward Mobility Act, which identifies and reforms processes that hinder upward mobility for people of color in the civil service system. I and many of our members have worked with the state from three to 30 years, and most and the most disheartening experiences we've, we've shared are the inequality of promotions and mistreatment to people of color in all state employment departments. We've cried out to our department executives and secretaries to enact change, but our cries were, de were deafened by their lack of interest to make changes. Reasons were unknown, but a sense of privilege existed within them. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was an answer, was an answer but we are still working the math to get the answers correctly. I am constantly passed over for promotion. I do not see enough of my faces represented in the highest level of our leadership. I'm not being utilized effectively, even though I have the most qualification and experiences. These are some of the comments and statements that have been said by our members and many people who work for the state of, for the state of California. We know the differences between equal opportunities for all and discriminative acts motivated by Americans' long-lasting history of racism, which has morphed into implicit bias in society and especially the workforce. This bill is essential to the answers for the Civil Rights Acts of 1964. We ask that you all continue to stand on the right side of history by approving this bill. Not doing so is evidence as to why it is still taking us 57 years to solve this simple problem. 
This is one of many steps to establish equity for people of color. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, and uh, seeing that there's witness coming forward, and this is also uh, one of the two new witnesses. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please state the name of the record? We appreciate it. Thank you. Sure Yes, sir. Uh, Christopher Lodge in Coalition for Justice in Equitable California. Uh, good afternoon, Senators. Uh, thank you for the chance to speak and urge your support for the Upward Mobility Act of 2021, or UMA 2021. My name is Chris Lobson, again, of the Coalition for a Just and Equitable California. Your support for the 2021 UMA is necessary to ensure upward mobility and confront racial inequity in our state. Before going any further, I'd actually like to say hi to my mom, Tanya, who's watching live today. And that's not just because I, like all of us, want to make our moms proud. My mom is actually a big part of what we're going to talk about today. My mom may not remember, but she once told me that she chose my name, Chris, and those of my siblings, Brian, Andrew, Dylan, and Erica, not just because she liked those names, but to hide our race on job applications. Think about that. She wanted to protect me as an African American who descends from U.S. slavery from the current impacts of the legacy and, and, uh, and the, the legacy of slavery, excuse me, which include employment discrimination. She had reason to be worried. She knew what our best, most recent evidence tells us, that job discrimination against African Americans is as bad now as it was when she was growing up, that half of all African Americans born poor are still poor by age 40, and that a full 70% of African American children born into the middle class will fall out of the middle class as adults. So she protected me. Never should any mother, any family in our state have to make such a decision. Currently, it's the policy of our state that the composition of boards and commissions be broadly reflective of the general public, including minorities and women, and based on merit and fitness. Last year's AB 979 requires diversity on California's corporate boards. It's time for our state to step up as well. By voting in favor of the 2021 UMA, you have a chance to make sure that at least as it concerns state boards and commissions, no one has to make the same choice that my mom made for me. You also have a chance to make sure that there is oversight and measurement of progress. The 2021 UMA requires data for different black or African American subgroups to be disaggregated, similar to what we do now for our a API brothers and sisters. Better, more clear data on the different needs of our communities means more effective strategies that save and improve lives. I urge your support for the 2021 UMA. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um,